Rule number two. There's only three rules. <coughs> Rule number two. Don't get bitten. There's lots of nasty, evil creatures out there that will come and bite you. It's the female of the species, gentlemen, we can blame. <laughs> they are the ones who want the blood for the protein for all the babies they're going to have. In most cases, a male's just a little packet of sperm, comes along, donates, and then dies. Or she eats him. <laughs> so it's the female of the species. So don't get bitten. There's horrible, nasty things out there. We live in the tropics. Everything in Kansas is twice as big. Hang on, ten times as big. These are local flies and mosquitoes. What can we do about it? We can cover up. <laughs> We've worked out that's inappropriate because we live in the tropics. It's too hot. What about nets? Nets are wonderful. Yeah, we'll just wait. <laughs> As bed nets, no one told me, walking around, people got a little bit freaked out with me <laughs> down at the beach in Palm Cove. All right, what about then using repellents? Well, it would be terrific if they worked, wouldn't it? Okay? People get bitten all the time. What's the problem with getting bitten? It's all these blood parasites and things. It's not only the bite site, where it bites you, hurts like hell and can come up with a horrible lesion. But you also end up with all these horrible things like fever, coma, and lesions, etc. Let's look at a few. Here's good old mosquito. Sporozoites in the salivary gland, injected during the bite, get into the bloodstream, start infecting red cells, cause all sorts of problems. I love these colorized scanning electron micrographs, don't you? Did you know blood is red? <laughs> They've colored it red. But look at the ones at the back. I could have colored it purple or blue or whatever. Here's the malaria parasites bursting the red cells, causing this hemolysis. That leads to anemia. You end up with this pallid skin, and particularly in the sclera of the eye, it can also lead to fever. One of the great fevers of the world. Not only does this happen, you end up with sticky red cells. The red cells stick to your capillaries, particularly within the brain. You can end up with disseminated intravascular coagulation, blocked blood vessels, or ischemia. You end up with your blood curdling within your own system. And of course, this puts you into a coma state, and you end up developing all this malaria pigment. So when you die, they chop your brain open, and there's all the pigment there. All right? So getting bitten is bad. You can die from the parasites. Trypanosoma brucei, tetsi flies, inject these horrible promastigotes. They actually lead to the trypomastigotes in the bloodstream. They can end up at the bite site, leaving a nasty canker, or you can end up with sleeping sickness, going into coma. Getting bitten is bad. Sand flies, wonderful sand flies out there, producing the promastigotes. You end up with amastigotes in the tissues. They can bulk out. Now, I apologise for the next two slides, but they are real slides. You end up with skin lesions. This is how devastating some of these are. And this parasite, a different species, it can eat the nose off your face, literally. Right? So this is the sort of thing that pulls at the heartstrings. And this is why we sensationalise everything. But remember, don't get bitten. That's the problem. What can we do about it? Let's control the parasites. The little buggers get resistant to all the drugs we develop. Let's kill the vectors. Let's kill those mosquitoes and those sand flies and those tetsy flies. Those little buggers get resistant to the insecticides. And we forget the scale of the problem. We might be able to do it at a local village, but what about the planet? What are we going to do about all of Africa? It's a huge scale. The logistic, the geographic, the economic, it is beyond the scale to cope with, even if we had the appropriate tools to do it. So these parasites are going to be around for a short time. Which brings us to rule number three. All right, remember, we're into predator-prey relationships now. So in this particular case, don't eat raw meat. All right? Cook it. We discovered fire when we were way back in caves. Use the fire, cook the meat. Why? Because a lot of the parasites are transmitted in the food that we eat. Here's wonderful lesions in the tissues, toxoplasma cysts. If we eat them, we end up with cysts. If we end up immunocompromised, we end up with space-occupying lesions in our brain and we can die. If you happen to be a pregnant woman and you catch it during pregnancy, or a pregnant sheep and you catch it during pregnancy, you can end up with abortion. All right? The fetus can be expelled. It will die. So this is a real problem. Another one out there that's slowly coming around, we're slowly working out, is this thing called microspora. 
it's usually in insects and in fish and in shellfish. But the more we have susceptible individuals eating these food sources, the more infections we're getting. It forms cysts, it forms lesions. These are gut sections of humans. Here's the numbers of parasites in the tissues. Pick the infected tissue. It's the white stuff. It should be this nice translucent tissue, but the white stuff is so packed out with parasites, it has changed colour. So, don't eat raw meat. Literally, it is really hard to change people's attitude. Have you ever tried to send a rare steak back in a French restaurant? <laughs> the chef will come out and hamstring you. But literally, I'm a parasitologist. I have worked out that meat is red because it's got blood. Blood is red because it's got iron. Iron is red because it's in an oxidised form. When you heat it up, it denatures. The red goes to brown. In other words, it goes rusty. So cook your meat until it goes brown. And at the browning temperature, it's that temperature which is lethal to most parasites which, in, which are in the tissues. All right, so live by three simple rules in the tropics, everybody. Survival in the tropics depends on simple three things. Avoid coprophagy, don't eat poo. Avoid hematophagy, don't let things bite you. And have sensible zoophagy, cook your meat. If you can do that, your life here in the tropics is going to be fantastic. <laughs> this is me at the beach this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is now that we can survive in the tropics and thrive in the tropics, it's become too bloody popular. All of you, go away. <laughs> you by yourself. All right, survival in the tropics, we can do it. Thank you.